Are people forgetting how great Aaron Rodgers is? Do you really think Rob Gronkowski is hanging up his cleats and one under the radar rookie that could make a huge impact this season? You are locked on NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What up, NFL fans, and welcome into a Wednesday edition of Locked On NFL. He is Tony Wiggins. I'm James Rapine. Thank you so much for making us your first listen and be sure to follow. Wherever you get your podcast, subscribe on YouTube for the latest and greatest NFL news. And we're going to get into Aaron Rodgers in just a second. But first, I have to welcome my man Tony Wiggins back. It's good to see your face, my man. I'm, I'm glad you're back with me here on a Wednesday. I'm glad to be back too, man. I'm telling you. Uh, I might have needed a little break from everything. But after a few days in the hospital, I was ready to come home. And uh, I couldn't stay off of the Locked On NFL thread that we have in our private dms because you guys kept me going so so let me just give the the national people a, a real quick viewpoint or synopsis if you will of, of what happened to me um i have something called diverticulitis uh, diverticulitis and it can be really really nasty and uh back in march i went in the hospital and i had a, a real bad infection and they cleared it out and gave me antibiotics it didn't go away it just slowly creeped back because it wasn't all gone so i this time I went uh, to the ER a few days before I got admitted and it was back, but they gave me some oral antibiotics and said, you'll be fine. I wasn't. So I went back again and I had another flare up and uh, this time they treated me for a longer period of time, 24 hours, just constant antibiotics. So it's a nasty, nasty little condition that affects some people worse than others. But fortunately for me, I'm good to go. It stopped me from eating so much. So I'm kind of back to normal now and I'm getting back. Got to get my strength back, but I'm fine. I appreciate you all being concerned. For sure. No, I'm, I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're uh, making your way back, but I'm glad you're back home. I'm, gl I'm glad you're with me and I'm glad you're doing well overall. That's oh, the yeah. thing that yeah, definitely, that, uh, definitely got, uh, if I come to Cincinnati, I wouldn't eat any chili right now. So, but, uh, still and it's been torture too man because i had my anniversary the other day my family's been taking me around a whole bunch of food and drink and i cannot partake in any of that stuff but i tell you what muscle memory i remember how i felt in that hospital so it is not that tempting at all really well wig that means that you can't visit cincinnati because you're not coming here without trying the chili so once you get all the way back then you could come here try the chili because I, I think you're gonna like it uh, but I'm I think I will. I think I will, too. I very, very uh, rarely don't like food. So uh, you're right, man. But we got a busy show today. We won't talk about me all day, man. Yeah, let's uh, let's dive into. Well, something, a topic that you brought up, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to give you the floor because you, you, our listeners haven't heard you now for a couple of weeks. So Aaron Rodgers, you have a thought on him and the former. Well, the not former, the current, the back to back MVP. I just think we have this thing in athletics, whether it's Kevin Durant, whoever, that the second they have uh, some sort of performance where we think that they underachieve, we go, oh, there it is. He's slipping. I remember a couple of years ago, Max Kellerman did it. You remember Max Kellerman said Brady was finished? And then Brady goes to win another Super Bowl. He I said it think, about 12 times, Max. Yeah, he did. He did. And I like Max. But the thing is, with I, I just think we forget how good Aaron Rodgers is. If their special teams play better, they beat San Francisco, period. And I and I know you're going like, well, it all falls on him. He had Devontae Adams. And you know what? It does. It does when we start thinking about him in the same stratosphere as Brady and Montana and all of those guys. Sure. But I want you to uh, just bear with me here. Steve Young never won anything until the very end. And we think of Steve Young as wonderfully great. Aaron Rodgers won – and he's had trouble getting back to win. And for somehow we're going, oh, he ain't as good as we thought he was. So these narratives kind of, I just watched the player. He's still the same dude when I watched him, except that they didn't do anything in the last game. And I think that's what happens sometimes. I think Aaron Rodgers is still right now as good as he ever was. That's just me. I think he's as good as he ever was, but I do believe that 
he does have more to prove when it comes time. Like, for instance, nobody ever talks about the fact that we call Phillip Rivers great. We call Tony Romo great. They never won nothing. Just because this dude won early and then all of a sudden he starts getting to the point where he's falling short all the time, we sit here and we look at him through a different lens than we do other people. I agree with you in the sense that Aaron Rodgers, of course, is great mm-hmm. and is twice. Uh, honestly, he's probably twice the quarterback. Pat, uh, you know, Tony Romo was, uh, or Philip Rivers, uh, and those are good players. They weren't great players. They're good. Um, but but here's here's the the thing. I think that Aaron Rodgers is in this category of Tom Brady, and that's the guy, right? And he's not Tom Brady. He's never been that guy. And that's not necessarily his fault, right? Because not many people are going to, there might be another one at some point, because I never say never, but as of now, there's one Tom Brady. And so when you play in that era, Carl Malone, right? He was Mm -hmm. great. Charles Barkley was great. Mm -hmm. How many rings do they have? Why? Because Michael Jordan was there. And so that that's part of it to me. Like, I think Aaron Rodgers is great, but I don't think he's, at any point, including now, the best quarterback in the league, like the guy I want, and maybe that's a take, but the guy I want over the rest, like, because he's played again, you know, Brady's been in the league, and then maybe it's Mahomes now. I don't know. Yeah, like, do, do you have Aaron Rodgers number one? I don't. That's a tough, tough question because I don't. I, 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 I mean, you, you obviously take Brady because of the winning, but you know, there are a lot of things. That have to go on with that too now you got to get a whole bunch of his guys brady kind of reminds me of lebron a little bit and and i'm going to tell you when he went he took a whole bunch of little pieces that he likes with him and lebron when he went wherever he went he always had a little james jones and a, a, a and a posy and he had these veterans that he could get to play for the minimum tyson chandler mm-hmm. all, 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 so it's always been these guys richard jefferson has always been these dudes that he kind of like took with him a little bit and brady kind of mm-hmm. sort of did the same thing a little a, a little in tampa but I'm not knocking him for his greatness. All I'm saying is this. I'm also, I also remember this. Brady won like three Super Bowls, and then he went nine years without winning another one. And nobody, mm-hmm. nobody talked about him being done. It's because mm-hmm. I guess he, there was the Peyton Manning factor. That's another guy. How many years did Peyton P- spend in Indianapolis? We, we remember him playing in Denver, but that ain't what, that's not the Peyton Manning we think about. We, yeah. think, about, we think about him being in Indy, right? That's mm-hmm. what we think. We think about the Peyton Manning that, and no one ever brings up how he got bushwhacked in the Super Bowl against the greatest show on turf. I mean, uh, uh, the, Seattle, the boom, mm-hmm. you know, what, what, you know, the Legion 12th of boom. man and all that Legion of boom. I watched that game. I re I rewatched it. Again. He got slaughtered in that, in that mm-hmm. game. So yep. the thing is, is these things don't come up about guys like that. And I'm starting to realize or it might be a figment of my imagination though it's the unlikability of him because we we all loved him we was discount double check dude but now it's this whole thing with the pandemic and you know it's all on him the smugness and the um the same thing they blame Kyrie for you know like I'm aloof and I'm beyond answering your questions and and right wrong or indifferent that's what people think so for me I think a little bit of that creeps in is where I, what I'm trying to do actually is keep that stuff out of my opinion mm-hmm. of him. And I think that's hard for a lot of people to do. I, I get that. I, I do. Um, but I, I have a, a statement I'm going to make about the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers. And then we're going to dive into uh, a future Hall of Famer and if he's going to come back this season or not. But first, I got to tell you about AG1 Athletic Greens. I take AG1 every single day. And what drew me to it is I'm bad at eating veggies. And AG1 is a good way to get vegetables in my system. It tastes great. You just put one scoop into eight ounces of water. Maybe you want a little more water, put up to 12 ounces of water. But you're getting over 75 different high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens that are going to make you healthier, that are going to make you feel better, give you more energy. And you get it with one simple scoop. So it's real easy. I, I, I take it in the morning. And it gives me energy. It's simple. It's easy to remember to do. There's no nasty chemicals. There's no GMOs. There's no artificial anything. And it still tastes good. It helps you sleep better as well. And it costs you less than $3 per day to get all of that. That's much less than you spend on coffee each day on the way to work. So check out 
AG1 right now. I've taken it every day and you should too. Athletic Greens is also going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network to take ownership over your health and try AG1 today. All right, we're talking quarterbacks, we're talking about Aaron Rodgers, and James and I may agree, but not mm-hmm. fully. I'm ready I have to a statement. You. Go ahead. I want you to give it to me, man. I'm I have ready a for statement it. Because you're over here praising Aaron Rodgers, and I'm just thinking about winning because that's what, you know, that's my mindset when it comes to this. The Green Bay Packers are no longer legitimate Super Bowl contenders. I do not think they are. It's a weapons league. Who's their best receiver? Probably a running back. (laughs) Probably a running back. And they can talk about all the, you know, oh, we got, you know, rookies and this is going to happen. Nah, man. It's in this league, you can't do that. It's a weapons league. Even the Chiefs, yeah, they gave up their weapon. They still got Travis Kelsey and they went and got Sky Moore and they signed Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Like, you need weapons. And so to me... Aaron Rodgers, I agree with you. I, I think he's still great. I think he's a little quirky. But I look at that team, I don't see them making a legitimate Super Bowl run. I really don't. Well, they weren't able to do it with Devontae Adams, who's the best receiver in the NFL to me. But here's where I go the other way a little bit. We don't see their weapons. And I know it's not the same personnel staff that has existed. All of It's not Ron Wolf and all of those guys, okay? I've never seen them without wide receivers ever. I, I, I just, I, I just haven't. And it, it's like, I go back to my teenager. They've always found these, these guys that we didn't think were very good. I don't know if they still have those dudes or not. I, I, I have no clue, but I know in the day and age where we micromanage everything and we watch everything so closely, it doesn't seem like they have them, but if there's ever going to be a team that doesn't need, elite wide receivers is one with a super elite quarterback because he'll make them all sort of look good. So maybe this is a a way, maybe they have some people in development that we don't know about. Maybe Matt LaFleur is the smartest dude in the room. I I have no clue. But to me, I I, I recall thinking when Antonio Freeman was done and then all of a sudden here comes Donald Driver. And I thought Donald Driver was done and here comes Greg Jennings. And I thought Greg Jennings was done and here comes Jordy Nelson. And I thought Jordy Nelson was done and here comes Randall Cobb. And I thought Randall Cobb was not enough and then here comes Devontae Adams. It's like they just don't stop. So for an organization like that, and like I said, I have to remind myself that it's not the same people. They may know something about their team that we all don't know. They may know that that they won three games without Devontae Adams last year, and they probably won a few more the year before without him when he was hurt. So it's not to to cast aspersions on his greatness. That's not what it is. But sometimes you can actually get better by losing the star receiver who you have to kind of make sure you feed the ball to. And these other guys, and you start spreading it around a little bit, and all of a sudden you end up okay. Well, Tony Wiggins is betting on Christian Watson, Sammy Watkins. Interesting. Sammy Watkins, Romeo Dobbs, uh, and it might be Dubs. I, I think it's Dobbs, though. Al Mazard, Malik Taylor, Danny Davis. I mean, that's who you're banking on. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm not banking on him. T- I'm just, I, I'm just I, saying, I, I, I won't write him off yet. I just can't do it. I, I, I just crossed him off. Super Bowl <laughs> contender. Not, not, not in Green Bay. All not right. in Green Bay. Now, if you give them those Vikings receivers, if you combine the Vikings and the Packers, now that's a Super Bowl team. One okay, of them, but let me but, nah, let, but let me ask right. you this: Would would you rather have would you rather have either the Vikings receivers and the Vikings quarterback, or would you rather have those two studs in Philadelphia with the Eagles quarterback, or would you rather have Aaron Rodgers with those wide receivers that he has? Give me one of those things. Which one to win? To win, and when you think of the teams they're on, also, which one would you rather have? And that's my point. I'd rather have Aaron Rodgers and six bus drivers than have those two great receivers or those two great receivers in Minnesota or Philly and those quarterbacks they got thrown in the ball. I, I don't know if you're actually right on that. Okay. I, I, it, just because to me, as a defense, like, man, like, okay, at 38-year-old Aaron Rodgers, is he really going to beat the San Francisco 49ers in the playoffs or beat – the insert whatever team you want to talk about in the postseason when it gets really physical, like it might be better 
to have that limited quarterback because you can have the Dalvin Cook and the Justin Jefferson and the – no, I'm not saying – I. come on now, it's Kirk Cousins. I'm not <laughs> investing in that man. Uh, at the same time, Jalen Hurts, maybe, you know, maybe, as crazy as it sounds, and I'm, I think I'm a little more bullish on Philadelphia than most, but – there is a chance. I do understand your point. It is a quarterback league, and it starts at the quarterback. And that's why you surround your quarterback with weapons. That's why you don't trade Devontae Adams. And I get it. He wanted to go to the Raiders and kind of pushed his way there. I understand that. But I don't think they had enough weapons even with Adams. Okay? So now there is no Adams. That's a big problem. And we'll see if uh, if I'm right about that. But speaking of weapons, did you see this video Tom Brady posted on Tuesday? I did not, but you told me about it. He's playing baseball, joking around because he was drafted once upon a time 20 years ago by the Montreal Expos. And he said, I wonder if that offer still stands from the Expos. And guess who was shagging balls as Tom Brady took BP? The same guy that probably walks around chugging a a gallon of milk all day, right? Rob Gronkowski, the guy who would be wide receiver one and tight end one in Green Bay, the team that Tony Wiggins thinks can still make – a Super Bowl run. Uh, that being said, Rob Gronkowski has not resigned with the Bucks. But let's be honest here. This dude isn't hanging up his cleats. There's no mm-hmm. way. He's he's running in the outfield and still hanging with Brady. He's coming back to Tampa this season, right? I would think so. I think I think he likes the attention. And he also probably likes the limited role to where they have so many other guys from Mike Evans to Terry Godwin and other tight ends on that roster. I think he, he he'll he come back, and I think he has fun. I, I, if it were New England, he wouldn't because he doesn't have fun up there. Remember, he said yep. that, you know. So, but I do think Tampa, the weather, the chance to have a limited role while winning, obvious um, days off for a veteran, a proven veteran, where he probably doesn't have to do much but maintenance during the season. Why not? I think he'll miss it more by sitting out and watching it especially since Tampa has a chance to do it all over again. They, mm-hmm. They're going they're going to be a contender until Tom Brady leaves. That's just it. So, yeah, yeah I think he's going to come back. And I just think it's something to get our attention. And I think it's good for the Tampa, and I think it's good for the league, too. I think Gronk is one of those dudes that fans resonate with him because he kind of reminds you of the same dude you're sitting there having a beer with, but he's able to play football on Sundays, and he does it really, really well. Would he be the number one option on the Packers offense if he signed with Green Bay? And I'm not saying he's going to. I'm just. Yeah, probably. But they're going to okay. throw. They're going to throw the ball okay. to the running backs too. So if somebody told me, if <laughs> somebody me, told, but well, watch this. But watch. I know you are. But I ain't, I ain't falling for that crap. I've, I've been a barber for 30 years, man. I know when somebody set a trap for me. But look, uh-huh. everyone says that Tennessee was a threat in the AFC, which was a stronger conference. They had no wide receivers last year because they were all hurt, right? And people actually got mad at the dude because he didn't get them further than he got them in Tannehill with with the expectation that he had one and a half wide receivers and they all banged up, no chemistry sure. or whatsoever. So, yeah, I, I think I think they still have a chance because I think their defense is going to be really, really special. And the Titans probably aren't even going to go to the playoffs this year because they made the decision to trade AJ Brown. We say that, but we say that, but they Man. didn't have it most of last year, and I think they were the number one seed. So I will that, say I, I I like Robert Woods. They were the number one. All right, they were an awful number one seed. Man. That's okay. Come on, that's, they played a bad comp- division. You're right, but guess what? Who else been playing in a bad division for a long time? Yeah. Was it what? Sure. Was Aaron Rodgers' record going to be? The Bears ain't beating them. Detroit probably won't. At worst, at worst, they're five and one in their own division. That that's right. That right there is is almost a what do they call that thing on the diving board? The springboard to the playoffs. Are you they're sure they're going to win the division? I, I think. Are you sure? The division. I think so. Jared, win the division. Jared Goff has better weapons than Aaron Rodgers. Jared Goff is still Jared Goff. I'm just I'm just saying. Like, think about that. Think about that. I mean, the Falcons might have better weapons than Aaron Rodgers. You give me a shotgun and you give you take a twenty-two and you can have fifty-five bullets and give me three bullets and tell me who got the most power. Me. I scare everybody in that room. Your little pop gun. I, it'll be like a Harlem Nights. Nice. Stop shooting that little thing, man. It, <laughs> you ain't hurt nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. How dare you sit here and tell me about how many weapons Jared Goff got? Jared Goff is still Jared Goff. You ever heard of Jamison Williams? I'm just. Yeah. Best receiver in this draft, and they stole him. At and he probably I'm gonna just, miss the first. And he probably gonna miss the first eight games. 
He might. He would also make the Packers a legitimate contender if, if they had someone like that. Weapons matter, man, more than ever. So, yeah, if you don't have a shotgun, then you're in trouble, man. And I, there's a receiver, by the way, that's under the radar that I'm kind of bullish on. He's a rookie, and no, he was not taken in the first round. And no, it's not Christian Watson, which would be such a turn after me being so negative on the Packers. We'll get to that next, coming up right here on Locked On NFL. I want to tell you about Bet Online, man. BetOnline.net is where you need to be if you are making wagers, which you uh, undoubtedly are on these playoff games, especially in the NBA. It is off the chain, man. It's a constant blowout. See, that's where you can get. You don't have to necessarily pick the winner, but they have these points. And teams are getting blown out, especially in the East. It's either going to be a blowout or it's not going to be a blowout. Not a lot of close games, so you need to go to Better Line, get all of your information because they're your continued source for all the sport wagering information from live betting to playoffs and sports. Tank fights this weekend. Tank and Raleigh are going to go at it in 135-pound division in boxing. That's something else you can look forward to. You need to make sure that you get in on the action. And where you do that is you need to head to the website today to use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action because Better Online is undoubtedly where the game starts for me. And your game starts here with us on Locked On NFL every Monday through Friday because it's your team every day. I'm here with my man James Rapine, and we ain't going to argue about, well, you know what? We are going to start arguing again. We're going to argue again because I already know it. We're going to sit here. And he, we, I gave him a little hint about who my player is going to be, so he already mm-hmm. knows where I'm going. But I love the player, not the team. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Here we go. Let me give mine first before you go. I know where you're you're going to go to Texas because that's just where your heart is. But before we get there, this Tyquan Thornton kid, I'm a fan out of Baylor. 50th overall pick. Um, I, I, it's fe- felt like a reach, and he's really thin. Obviously, super fast guy. But when I hear someone like Greg Cosell of NFL Film say, reminded me of Chris Olave on tape. Wow. And it's like, oh, Chris Olave was the 11th pick. Saints oh. gave up a lot of capital to get him. Who, who picked Thornton? The Patriots. Oh. And so you go to New England, 50th overall. There's a clear need there. Mac Jones needs that speed threat. I think Mac Jones is an okay quarterback. And it's like, oh. So – don't be shocked if Taquan Thornton has a uh, has a pretty good day. I know Kendrick Bourne praised him recently, and so uh, w- wouldn't be shocked if he has a pretty big rookie year. Now I'm not saying he's going to be Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson or be like that, right? But maybe the Patriots got it right with this one and, and finally got it right at receiver. It sounds like everything sort of lines up for that to happen. So I agree with you about the need. I agree with you about the specific thing that he provides that team. And I agree with you about the opportunity. Opportunity is seriously important. It's almost like the left-handed pitcher that doesn't have control. They're going to keep giving him chance after chance after chance to find that control because he's a left-handed pitcher who pitches 100. Yep. Yep. So I, so I kind of get that. Yeah, I know. I think uh, I think he's got a shot. And I was kind of low on the pick because I thought he was more of a third-round guy. But the opportunity – you certainly have a special skill set that fits. It should all t- chime in, and, and he, he's got a legitimate quarterback. So I wouldn't be shocked if he ends up uh, having a big year. Now, th- that being said, do I like George Pickens more than him? Of course, right? Do I like some of these guys that went ahead of him? No doubt. And we'll see what those guys do. But I, I really like Thornton, and he's kind of an under-the-radar guy that I think could have an impact. That's a great pick. I like Pickens, too. I'm just wondering what the over-under is on – how many days it takes for Pickens and Claypool to get a fight? Because, <laughs> because they're kind of yoked the same. You know what I'm saying? They're kind of yoked to, yeah. to be confrontational. So, But that's going to be an interesting pairing. In, in, but I'm going to go to Dallas. You already oh. called it. Yep. I'm going to Dallas. But I'm not going to Dallas because of them. I'm going to Dallas because of who? We were – well, I know I was at the Senior Bowl, and I was all over Jalen Tobert. I was on, on all over Jalen Tobert last year, and I asked Jim Nagy, if he was going to be invited. And he says, if he plays like he played last year, he'll be invited. And he did. He's tall. He's rangy. He was a guy that I thought was on the radar. I should have been on the radar for Jacksonville. I think he's an ex receiver. 
Now, here's why I'm on him so hard. They've shown a propensity to throw the ball a lot in Dallas. It doesn't mean they're going to win the game, but they're going to throw it a lot. They let go of a couple of their receivers. They still have C.D. Lamb. They also have Michael Gallup. Gallup's in and out sometimes because of some soft tissue injuries. And I think he's even had an ACL. Uh, I think he had an ACL this year. Jalen Tobler is ready to play right now. And he 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 has this thing because he's 6'3. He runs, he he has a catch radius and he catches balls in traffic. So once again, by default, and I'll give you this. I think the Cowboys are gonna be behind a lot. How about that? And if they're behind a lot, that gives an opportunity. That's the opportunity that we talk about all the time for him to make plays. So I think statistically and stylistically, Jalen Tober has a chance to really, really get off to a hot start at six foot three for the Cowboys and make a lot of catches. There you go. All right. I mean, shocker. Tony Wiggins, you know, is a big I said they were, Cowboys. I said they were going to be behind, so that means he's catching balls, man. If they're losing, doesn't that mean that I don't have a lot of faith in them? Mm-hmm. You're trying. You're trying to – I get it. I get it. I get what you're trying to do. You're hiding behind it, but hiding behind that star. I understand. <laughs> No, I, I think he could be a good player. I, I I get it, and I understand it. And that's the fun part, I think, because there's going to be some receivers, you know, mid-round guys year after year that that end up emerging and impressing. So we'll, we'll see if those guys uh, pan out. Any last words, Tony? Yeah, make sure you tune into the Locked On NFL podcast Monday through Friday. This is the Wednesday edition. We have others on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. They give it to you like no, no, nowhere else, man. It's a look around the National Football League from some of the best in the business because we are the best, in my opinion, here at the Locked On NFL Podcast Network. Glad to be back with you guys. Jamie and I will see you guys again next Wednesday. Until then, make sure you like, subscribe, wherever you get your podcast to the Locked On NFL Podcast because it's your team every day.